Let's see. So yeah, a few things to talk about this week in terms of uh, viewer uh, uh, upcoming viewer stuff. Um, one thing that has been previously announced, but we should mention it again, is that some of the older versions of TLS are going to be getting turned off uh, on November 1st. Um, and this will, uh, I think, affect some older viewers. Um, the the update to more recent versions is, it, you know, was a few years ago. So I think all of them, you know, viewers that have been updated fairly recently should still be in good shape. Um, Kyle, you had some details on who you knew was affected. Do you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, I think one of the initial bug reports that we'd seen come in was uh, about uh, lib open metaverse based viewers. Uh, good question. I don't know if we have any test regions that have the uh, TLS disablement already disabled. Uh, Ryder, any idea about that? People always ask me questions right as I put something in my mouth. Um, We're always watching, Ryder. Yeah, yeah. I'll just have to put a thing over my camera here or something. Uh, let's see, if if I remember correctly, it's not so much a region thing since this is since the uh, this comes into play during login. Um, and we have not turned off the TLS on logins uh, or TLS one and one dot one on login on Agni. Um, uh, I am not sure of the status on on uh, on Aditi on Data Grid. I'm inquiring right now uh, if we can disable it on Aditi before November first for testing purposes. Uh, okay. That probably would, if we haven't, we probably should. That's a good idea. All right, uh, let's see, other topics. Um, we have the performance improvement uh, project, uh, pretty early stages right now, but we're already finding some, uh, some good low-hanging fruit there. Um, this will be coming out as... It's already out as a project viewer, and the project viewer will be getting updated periodically. Um, and we're tackling a range of issues. Some of them are kind of pure performance issues, like, you know, this thing is slow, we want to make it faster. But we're also looking at issues that affect uh, frame rate variability, where, you know, you get a, an intermittent spike every second or something like that. And if we can... You know, if we could take things like that and smooth them out more, um, you know, that's that's going to feel better for people, even if it doesn't get, you know, faster on average. Um, so we're considering kind of both types of changes currently, and uh, we'll, we'll keep you posted. But if anybody's interested, um, yeah, do feel free to check out the project viewer that's currently out. I think all we have now is the 64-bit Windows viewer. We will get things fixed eventually for... 32-bit Windows and Mac, but just this first one is uh, 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 is not supporting those yet. Yeah, I saw there was some discussion in. Uh, oh yeah, I should post the um, post the forum thread too. There's some discussion in the forum thread and some Jira's coming in. So yeah, any more of that would be great. Uh, let's see, one, another piece that we're using for the performance improvement project, but is, is actually kind of separate, is Tracy support. Um, 
basically we've got some changes to the viewer to enable uh, the the uh, uh, Tracy performance tool to be integrated with our viewer. Um, started out as uh, basically the frame timers that we already had could be turned into the you know Tracy's equivalent, and then we've added some additional macros for other types of uh, Tracy tracking. So part of what we're going to need to do is to get the um, is to get that code into uh, you know into our released viewer. Um, it's kind of a it should be kind of an uh, you know invisible change because Tracy isn't enabled by default. It's something where you you know it's more for developers like if they want to turn it on for particular purposes. Um, so the you know the the version of the viewer that has Tracy support is still going to be built with the um, it's still going to be built with the uh, setting that says you know don't actually build with Tracy. So um, it's 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 basically just there if people want to take the code and and use it when they're when they're developing. Uh, but in any in any case, there is a there is a separate kind of branch for that, and at some point it's going to get pulled into a main viewer. So we'll we'll keep you posted when we know the timing on that. I think the code for kind of actual Tracy support, as opposed to the places where we're using Tracy to improve performance, is about done. So uh, that that should be coming out, you know, before too much longer. Uh, you know, subject to the usual viewer release uh, timing issues. Uh, okay, I think I've covered that one uh, with some degree of minimal clarity. Uh, okay, so we talked about TLS, talked about Tracy, uh, talked about the performance project. Uh, the other thing, one of the things we're looking at for performance is trying to speed up Water reflections, um, our handling of that is pretty inefficient because water gets rendered first, which means that we calculate a bunch of expensive stuff with the water, even if there, it turns out there's actually no water visible because there's something else blocking your view of it. So we're trying to add some uh, occlusion checks for that. Um, Kitty, I was thinking that you had done some work on that or had talked about that in previous meetings. Um, where are you with that? Is it anything that we could potentially uh, uh, get a hold of or or uh, hear more about? Okay, well that sounds great. Let us know, and uh, you know if we have something we can, we'd probably just pull it into the performance branches. Uh, there's more optimizations. Uh, let's see. I think that covers the actual announcement stuff. Just talking about the state of viewers in general. Uh, we did put out a new default viewer this week. That's the um, that's the Mac notarization viewer which hopefully means we've finally gotten rid of all those messages about how oh, oh, this, this uh, you know, viewer is super sketch and you shouldn't install it. Um, so if you run into any issues on Mac, uh, you know, with the latest viewer, please let us know. Um, but hoping that that's all sorted now. Um, I think the next viewer that will be coming out after that is going to be the Mate G plus H. Viewer, which is uh, uh, you know a, a fairly broad range of different bug fixes that have uh, uh, gotten pulled in from a couple of active dirt viewers. 
Um, and I think that's probably about it. So what else is on your mind? Yeah, we have had some discussions about VS 2019, uh, especially in the context of trying to switch over to Clang. Um, there's some there's some scuttlebutt that Clang may give us substantially better performance if we can if we can get it working. Um, so hoping to get somebody to take a look at that, uh, you know, as as part of the performance work. Um, if we don't have to recompile the libraries, then that's definitely a big win. That's usually the slowest part of any kind of uh, any kind of updates. Anybody else out there using Clang at this point on, on Windows? A uh, question about the simplified cache viewer. Yeah, that one's kind of on hold right now. We've just got too many viewers uh, active, and it's it's just kind of stretching uh, development and QA thin. So um, that one probably isn't going to be getting a ton of attention in the in the near term. Uh, iOS viewer, yeah, there's there's a whole bunch of discussion going on around mobile, and uh, it's complicated, and we're we're not quite ready to announce anything publicly yet. So I'm going to have to defer discussion discussing that right now. Yeah, legacy profiles. Uh, don't know. We've had quite a bit of um, we had quite a bit of discussion on that a few months ago, and then we've been waiting on kind of getting a time slice on the the required back end work. Um, so I think uh, I guess the short answer is I don't think anything is going to happen right away with with legacy profiles. It's just. Uh, it's it's not that we don't care. It's just that we got up a, a lot of other stuff in the in the pipeline too. Yeah, he's wasting all his time showing up at meetings and eating and stuff. Oh, I'll just have to, to cut out the meal breaks. Yeah, I mean, if we're going for the high nails, we really got to talk about the sleep thing, too.
Yeah, we do have a branch for adding C++ 17 support. Uh, I think that actually may be in mate G plus H, but let me double check. Uh, yeah, it looks like that is in mate G plus H, so if all goes according to the current plan, our next promoted viewer should have the uh, C++ 17 features enabled. Uh, Ryder, we're using VS 2017, but we haven't actually had the flag set to enable all of the C++ 17 features, so, so that's what this part is about. And it's not it's not out quite yet. Uh, yeah, I don't think we'd probably see a huge performance difference with the um, simplified cache. I mean, it, it is much more streamlined for the stuff that it does, but there's a fairly small percentage of content that's actually going through it at this point, um, especially since uh, texture loading is, uh, uh, is still going through its own completely separate pipeline um, but it's uh, I mean it's a fair question I don't have uh, really stats to hand about that um, you know if, if we did see evidence that the simplified cache had a significant impact on performance then we uh, you might want to consider trying to pull that into that viewer Uh, sorry, you mean view, viewer side animation overrides?
Yeah, uh, I don't remember any new discussion on that. Um, it's, you know, it's certainly in the, you know, things we're, we're considering list, but uh, don't think we have anything going on with it in the current, uh, current viewers under development. Do some of the, the TPVs have their own mechanisms for implementing that? Yeah, I think the tricky thing about our current animation overrides is that they're all tied to the, um, you know, the kind of behavior graph for avatars, such as it is. So, you know, the simulator tries to keep track of whether you're walking or running or flying or whatever, and then uses that info to decide what animation to play. But in terms of just like, you know, you, you request some arbitrary animation and then you want that to be translated into some other arbitrary animation. Um, it doesn't really give you a, it, it doesn't really give you a hook to do that. But we, we could conceivably implement something, uh, you know, kind of, uh, kind of along the same lines. Oh, I see what you mean. I'm not sure how how much could the viewer do with that information. Not, does the viewer actually know all the states, or does it just know what animations it gets sent, and then the the simulator keeps track of the states? Yeah, I mean, it probably does need uh, a bit more design, Kitty. Um, we have, I mean, our, our state graph for for avatars, you know, are you running or flying or whatever, is pretty rudimentary. And, um, you know, of course, a lot of the animations are, are independent of it. So um, if you want a sort of a general mechanism for overriding, then it it gets uh, it's a little complicated. But certainly, in principle, um, you know, any mapping of uh, animations to other animations could be done by the viewer because the the simulator. The simulator doesn't really play anything, it just sends you IDs based on what it thinks you're supposed to be doing.
getting everyone to stop doing anything is uh, kind of another question, though. Historically, we've been able to add new things. But we can almost never completely get rid of old things. Uh, Coffee, do you think it's a problem with the fact that it's an animation in inventory, or is it is it just a problem because you know you've got to fetch the the data for a different animation because it's a different ID? I mean, obviously the animations themselves have to be fetched, and and waiting for them to show up can sometimes affect the timing of playback, which is uh, kind of a limitation of our system. Yeah, there's there's definitely some uh, you know communication lag for that sort of thing that makes it hard to do you know synchronized animations and that sort of thing. Or sometimes you get animations synchronized that you didn't really want to be like everybody's line dancing because you know the same animation started playing for everybody when the when it finally finished loading. Yeah, um, I'm not sure what you mean by animation sets. I mean, you you could have, you could have, you know, the IDs for a bunch of different animations, but I mean, the server doesn't 
doesn't play them and it doesn't have the contents, right? All it does is is you know say you know tell the viewer, hey, play animation number seven seven three a b dash f blah blah, and then you know so then the viewer still has to load all that content before it can do anything. You know, you could avoid a step if the if the simulator just said, "Hey, play this animation, and this is what the animation is," and you know, dumps all the bits on you at the same time. Um, and that saves you a round trip, but then it means you got a bunch of sort of redundant information. If it was something you already knew about, and you'd want to try to avoid that. Yeah, oh yeah, well that's true. I mean it does save you a save you a step in that sense. Yeah, you got to look out for that stuff. It'll get you every time. All right. Well, I don't have any other topics for this week. If uh, people want to run off and have a weekend or get something done or whatever, we can do that. Going once, going twice. All right. See everybody next time.